What happens when you bring two of the world's best collectors together and challenge them to go head to head in a 10 round auction battle? Welcome to Clash of the Collectibles. Two experts compete on a road trip treasure hunt. Carry on whinging. <laughs> Our combatants, Great Britain's international antique star, Eric Knowles. I'm butting for Britain. He's travelled to Australia to take on top dealer, author and retro lover, Alan Carter. So it is a genuinely difficult competition. I want to beat him and he wants to beat You're me. You're looking at me. You're looking at me. It's all about outwitting. $50. I'll give you $60. Outdealing. Better watch this one. Over $200, Alan. Are you serious? And outselling in a massive auction showdown. First, second, third and final I'll sell. Whoever wins the most rounds after 10 auctions will win the competition. Both our experts can buy anything they want, and we mean anything. It's so you. Because like yesterday's that. perfect purchase oh God, could turn out to be auction day's big Jesus. dud. Paid 100 for those. Ouch. So fasten your seatbelts. Um, it's going to be a bumpy ride. I want to kick you. What a bad loser. Round six, and Eric leads by three wins to Alan's two. But on pure profit, Eric has a wafer-thin $30 lead. Temperatures are rising as the boys drive further north along the New South Wales coast. So I'm assuming this is the lake. Oh, no, it's Clarence River. Oh, is it? If you drive north of Coffs, the countryside is absolutely stunning. And for a long way, you ride alongside the Clarence River. And it's just beautiful. The sky's blue and it is so simply Australian. It's my stomping ground, I go there all the time. First stop, an old butter factory. Now home to Ludo and Swagman's old wares. Eric, we are about to go in there to some very interesting people. I do like to bring you interesting yes, people and interesting yes. places. Well, um, before we do, Alan, before we do, we've got, to, uh, we've got to see how much dosh we've got, haven't we? It says here, Lucky 1300. It says here, lucky 1800. So oh. I've got 1800 and you've got 1300. Oh, well, Alan. That's never uh, happened before, has it? Well, don't worry about it, Alan, because I can tell when you are being economic with the truth. 13. Yeah, yeah Alan, <laughs> don't even try. OK, Eric. I'm working you out. It's taking me a long time, but shall we go for it? As you go in, it's, it's not really people friendly. It's sort of. No food, no toilets, and no discounts. You walk in and you're confronted with this mass of ceramics and glass, and it's huge, huge, and so is the owner, Ludo. Now, Ludo, he is a huge person, a huge personality. I like to think of myself as a bit of a Harold Steptoe mixed with uh, Arthur Daly. And he has a partner named Simon who goes by the nickname of Swaggy. My name's Simon Swaggy Burke. Uh, I'm an antique old wares dealer. They've got this policy there that says no discounts, and they mean it. Uh, see that sign over there? No discounts. That means everybody. All right? What, what does Alan do? First thing he, he does is go into what I call confrontational mode. We're dealers, right? And you go, no, we're not going to give you a discount. Oh, no, we're going to stick to our guns, as if. Or well, some old guy coming in the outside who hasn't got a clue what the trade's all about and he just pays whatever you ask him. Well, I'm not that person. If there's no discounts and no deals, look, why mate. wouldn't I just go? And I had to say, well, look, you know, it's a bit different. This is dealer to dealer. We have to sell an auction. I need you to give discounts. Well, I mean, that, that was like a red rag to the board. Look, mate, I don't ask for discounts when I go to places, mate. You I'm just one of those, take no, the ring, you show no. them your rings, and you go, give us a discount. They go, oh, all right. <laughs> I thought, if this is going to turn a little bit um, unkind, um, I'm looking for a sign that says exit. I'm going to wipe me brow here, mate. Wake your eye, yeah. No, wipe me sweat, Wipe the tears away. And Ludo, look. Oh, well. Uh, look, 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 look. How much Lovely jubbly, uh, mate. Lovely jubbly. Actually, yeah, give us some of that, yeah. actually. We've had, a, get a we've had a pretty good day today. <laughs> we'll take care of you. We'll take care of you. All right. So I got them to actually discount. I'm probably the first person ever to manage to do that. So I'm quite proud of that, really. All I need to know 
is that applies to a POM as well as to an Aussie. That's what I need to know. Well, the POMs are the worst, actually, in this business. I've got to tell you. In <laughs> Listen, <can> I... <laughs> let me tell you. Uh, you don't scare me, because you know, the bigger you are, the faster Come I on. run. OK? Come on. You should know that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Well, we, we can both see we got we got a figure of forty-five dollars on there. So I thought, well, you know, we sorted the discount. I'll, I'll give it a go. What's your best? I think we'll go down to about thirty-five bucks for you. Thirty-five. Well, I think hey, that'll uh, hey. do the job. So forty-five dollars instantly became thirty-five dollars. I thought, ah, oh, we're going to do some business here. Eric's off and into it, but Alan's having trouble introducing Swagman to the concept of discounting. Simon, I was looking at this. It's made out of coloured silver foil paper, and the bullfight actually looks like Elvis Presley. It's in immaculate condition. Yeah. But it's very colourful, but you've got 75 on it. Well, that's a price, Alan. No, it's not. You've been told. I've been, yeah, and we just agreed, he just agreed that you'll take care of us. When I asked him for a discount, he went completely, utterly blank. He had no idea what to say because he'd never done it before. And he just, he just became tongue-tied and said to the camera, Cut. <laughs> <laughs> so he could recover the fact he was going to give me a discount for 20 bucks. <laughs> 55. 55. I'll do, I'll do 60. All right, I'll do 60. Do 60? Yeah, done. All right. And I would have paid $90. It, I would have paid $150. Right. It's just one of those things that they didn't reckon and I do reckon, and it slipped through the cracks. So I got a very, very good buy on that. Has the Australian heatwave affected Eric's common sense? Is he really buying an ironing board? Now, this is not my normal forte, but I'm thinking, Alan knows a thing or two about ironing boards, um, and uh, I know he looks at them from a display point of view. I can go down around the $40 mark on this. $40, right. OK, $40, put it there. It's a done deal. Sounds like, okay. sounds like they go to me. OK, excellent. Cheers. OK. Do you know, I've never, ever bought an ironing board in all the years I've been doing telly. What about the, uh, the bench, son? Finally, Swagman got, gets uh, into the swing of bargaining. 75. For you, Alan. I'm the only one here. $60 for you. $60. I'll take that. Take it? 60 I'll take it. No worries. No arguments. Thank you. Thank you. Look at that. Ludo is a rock and pop expert and sells thousands of classic records. That is 1958. That is uh, Buddy Holly and the Crickets. Well, it's just the chirping crickets at the time. That's the textured cover on Brunswick. One stage, that was worth over $700. Alan spends $160, including those hard-won discounts. My bench was $75. While Eric drops $135. If I give you... Three of those. When Australia sees all this behaviour, I'll see that sign over there. No discount. It's just going to have to. No discounts. Yeah. Well, they're going to have to come down there. We're going to have to change yeah. that to sweetheart deals. Yeah. Come oh, on in, sweet. take our money. Oh, sweetheart really? deals. Yeah. Okay, guys, I could do it. Simon, thanks, Alan. Thank you very much. Oh, Mate, ooh, oh, oh, oh. oh. You broke my arm. Watch the, <laughs> watch the jewelry. Hang on, Alan. I'm, I'm here. I'm here. Oh, well, that'd be handy then, wouldn't it? Oh no, I'm here. I'm here. Yeah, to... that bit. Okay. OK, got it. Yeah, put it around again. Around again? Oh, oh you've done this before, Alan. They're off, and what a treat for Eric, travelling through this beautiful Australian countryside. Next stop, Ballina, and an amazing place called Summerland. From Ludo's, we drove about an hour and a quarter up the road to a beautiful, beautiful city named Ballina. It's home to the world's biggest prawn. Oh, where do you go with something like that? I've seen a big banana, I've now seen a big prawn, and the only thing that can match it are the big mouths. Ah, well, what is Yeah. Wow. Come on. Just minutes from the monster prawn, our next stop. This is a Summerland Antiques. This is owned by a guy named Burr. I've known him since the first day I was in Australia. He came to the very first sale we ever had. And we've been mates ever since. Um, we go to a place called Summerland, which is run by, wait for this, Alan's mate, Bert. Again, huge place. Eric and Alan both have heaps left of their $1,300 budget. Hey, Bert. How, How are, are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. You're looking well. I know. Yeah. 
won't know much of Pram is. A silver cross Pram is something that probably no antique dealer would normally buy. He bought it because he knew it's the Rolls Royce of Prams. And it's 60 years old. Also, my three daughters have each had a silver cross Pram exactly that colour. There's an emotion to this yeah. because I can't even begin to tell you how many miles I've walked pushing a silver cross Pram in front of a little baby in there. Yeah. Like that, right? So I'm looking at this Pram and thinking, oh, you know, I really want to buy it, but how can you put it in an antique auction and get anything for it? Can I get under 200? I need to get that down to about 180. Uh, how much have we got on it? Oh, I think it was about 295, 250, yeah. I don't know. He just, anyhow, makes, it, just makes it up. Yeah. He starts off, he's got 200 on it. He says, I'll, I'll tell Alan 295. <laughs> yeah. Alan will come down to 200 and he'll get what he wants. Yeah, that's yeah. right. I know, yeah. but we've been around. Oh, so what have you offered, Alan? 180. Yeah, we'll take it. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you yeah, very no, much. Right. I'm, I very much that's, appreciate that's that. That's okay. Yeah. Do you do? Right. Whether I'll make a profit, I don't know, but it's just like new. It's a fantastic thing. Eric spots the biggest dinner setting he's ever seen. Uh, and I see a cabinet full. I, I, I just couldn't believe my eyes. It's made in Bohemia in Czechoslovakia, perfect for when 18 guests drop in. But it's a still, it's a beautiful set. It's a huge set. Yeah, yeah a lot of it. That's why uh, I'm going to let you have it at a very reasonable price. No. Because I need it, uh, I need to get rid of it. Do you? OK, well, come up with, with a very reasonable price. Um, because... Not a cent under, $150 a lot. $150 the lot. A lot, yeah. And you really do want to get rid of it, don't yeah, you? Yeah. 150 Australian dollars, yes? Yes. He said, yeah, I only came in the other day and I just like to keep things moving along. So, <laughs> bit of a, bit of a no-brainer once again. I'm just going to say thank you very much. Thank no you worries, very much. Yeah. Thank you very Good much. In that order. Yeah, right on, mate. I don't want to gloat, but this service could blow my opposition well out of the water. Alan fancies an oil painting that Bert's just picked up in England. I just really like it. What sort of money is that, Bert? Your price would be, well, probably $90. Same as we always yeah, do. No Every deal was shake. Yeah. Hello, Bert. Oh, Eric, haven't met my... Uh, uh, my, no. my, my cocker too, have you? Hello. Yeah. Um, he does talk sometimes. Does he? Yeah, quite often, but uh, he seems to be shy when people are around. So, what's his name? Cocky. Cocky. <laughs> Cocky, OK. Yeah, yeah. It's an interesting stop because I get to meet uh, Cocky, uh, his pet cockatoo, and I didn't know that cockatoos lived to up to 100 years of age. I mean, this is something new. Oh, he's going to outsee me. Uh -oh. Sure. Well, you're very beautiful. I've never been as near to a cockatoo in my life. Sure, you don't want to pet him. No, <laughs> no, no, no. There was one other, well, unofficial pet um, that I didn't get to meet, and that is the nine-foot python that finds its way in and out of the building. We knew it was in here. It's been on the sea, you know, around here. It's broken a lot of china. Oh, over it's here. living here. You know, it either lives in the shop or lives out the back. It just travels around our area here. You know, it probably could be on a bit of furniture down the back. But you don't know where he is. No. But, no. Uh, you know, if you felt, felt something grab you on the leg, it could be him if you're lucky. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. OK. Now, First, Alan buys a pram. I was doing that. Then... It's a, um... Sled. Sled, and, uh, <laughs> as you can see. And uh, I've never ridden one because there's no snow around here. It's $195. I've got to get to $80. <laughs> yeah, right, you can have a brain. <laughs> 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 oh, dear. Yeah, that's right. Carefully avoiding snakes, Eric sticks with ceramics. That's quite nicely done. This Crown Devon Art Deco typifies Eric's strategy, buying quality over quantity. You can have it a bargain of $75. $75? Yeah. Hey, let me snatch your arm off. Yeah, OK. Right. No yes, thank you once again, Bert. So, bearing in mind that I'd made the, the big purchase and this purchase, um, I thought I'd cut and run. I got $89 on it. But, um, you know, what do you, what do you think you'd like to get it for? And don't screw me too much. Alan's hoping for one last bargain buy. This is about 30 bucks for... Oh, jeez. What it is? <laughs> well, you know that. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't. Yes, you do. <laughs> You'll say 40, yeah. 35.50. 35. <laughs> 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 oh, you're a hard man, Alan. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. 
Alan splashes out $385 with his old mate, Bert. Give you some change. How much change? Uh, I'll give you uh, $15 change. That's right, Alan. I'm, ca I'm counting behind you. Yeah, I'm making sure. Yeah, 385 I And I'm them. going and I'm going to let you off for the 50 cents. Oh, yeah. Bert. Yeah, I'm yeah, so no, amazed. Yeah. Eric spends $225. Okay. A bit of stuff um, could he give us the latest intelligence on the Python? Are we good to get from here to our, to our vehicle? Yeah. Can we get that? He's worried about snakes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Then, I'm not well, really... There's no snakes between here and, the, uh, <laughs> and their car, is there? There was no. a red belly out there about three or four weeks ago. <laughs> red belly black. Red belly black snake. Uh, they get hold yeah. of you, mate. Yep. I'll see you out just in case you need okay, something. OK, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> it's a beautiful 50-minute drive from Ballina to Chindera Bay. Yo, whoa. Got an egg on you. <laughs> Cracking that. It's so hot. It uh, really is. It's Australia in the summer. What do you want? Yeah. It's about 30 degrees. 35, I think, somewhere around there. I believe you, Alan. Chindera Bay Antiques is part shop, part museum, part movie props hire business. Lead the way, Alan. OK, here we go. Alan still has $755 to spend. Eric, a massive $940. They started with $1,300. Right. Can you go in, Eric? Tell me if you've ever seen anything like this place before. Ah! No, in a word, look at all this. It's just the entrance way. Oh, look at these, Alan, look at these. I know. It's a museum. I mean, it is remarkable. And then in there, there's the best shell art you've ever seen in your life. Oh, goodness me. Section. Look at that. You know, when you go inside, it's just like being inside a cave. There's no light anywhere, but it's the most unique experience you can have, is walking in there and seeing the items on display. We meet Ray, um, again, another one of Alan's mates. Ray, this is truly an incredible collection. I mean, this is just a fraction of what it consists of. How long has it taken you to assemble what I'm looking at now? I started probably 35 years ago, a little shop, and, and maritime stuff started coming in, and I thought I'll keep some of it. And I've sold probably 200 times what's here. I mean, Everywhere you look, it's just crammed to the gunnels, if I can use a nautical term. But also, knocking around the place, he does have ordinary antiques and collectibles. Sometimes you can buy, because that's not really his line. They come in with other things. Now, I've just spotted something in the distance, and uh, it's, got a, it's got a red light flashing over the top of it. So. The first thing uh, I came across was a piece of Lalique. I mean, it's the last thing you're expecting to find in what, to all intents, could have been Davy Jones's locker. This is, is nice, but it's not old. Um, by that, it may well be 1960s. It's not nautical and not cheap. I know what it retails for. Um, you see, you don't want to pay too much and you don't want to be seen as do. being mean. So... I came out with an offer of 350. And, uh, well, I, I thought it was worth 400, so 350 is close, so you're okay. I accept that. Yeah, okay, fair deal. Okay, good yeah. lad. Alan sits on an old chair. Well, it's 100 year old. It is 100 years old, and for 40 bucks is nothing for the chair. I'll get $85 for it. Oh, I'm that's happy good. about that. Good. Ray has a nice little sideline in hiring out his gear for movies. What about your connection with Hollywood and all that I keep hearing about? <laughs> Hollywood on the Gold Coast. There's a, a really good film studio. They hire out to different companies. So last year we did Pirates of the Caribbean. That was pretty big. Years ago, we did uh, Nicole Kidman's first one, Dead Calm. Since then, we've done Ghost Ship. We've done Narnia. There's been 150 movies we've done. Really? Mm. Something like 90% of his stock is not for sale. He makes more money from renting them out for TV and film studios than he ever would selling them. There are incredible artefacts here. I've got the helmet here. This weighs 24 kilos. It's a genuine one. A bit claustrophobic. <clears throat> you want to hold one side of it first? Uh, I don't know if I can, actually. Well, anyway, in you go, Alan. There you are. Are you right, Alan? You got that? Take it on your shoulders. That's it. Go on, take it. Oh, 
That is such an improvement. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> you wear that, you'll get attention, Alan. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, no, and, there's, and it's soundproof as well. It is. We can't hear you. It's like being underwater with two <laughs> sharks looking at me. All right, OK. All right. Oh. Yeah. Welcome back, Alan. <laughs> Welcome back. Ray also has a collection of shark jaws. Compare the size of the feared white pointer to a prehistoric monster. What they think a jaw looked like of a large, early great white called a megalodon. Thankfully, it's extinct. Teeth, a tooth of one. Although... The teeth are still getting washed up around the world. Are they really? And that's the same. All oh, right. As that had. So they still think those things are living. Some of them are still in the ocean out there. No. There's photographs of them. Yeah. Really? But that's, that's a 60-foot shark. You said 50, 50 40, 40, 40 90, 15. Alan puts 15, together a bundle buy, a glass vase, Royal Dalton jug, four plates with London scenery, and a Beswick wall vase. So 225 a lot. Cash. Cash? Cash. Done. done. Don't see much cash these days. <laughs> <laughs> All right, done. Then two final buys. You're using that as a paperweight, but is it for sale? Paperweight? Well, yeah, I guess so. She um, wrote big papers. We get a lot of banknotes we've got to sort of hold down. <laughs> <laughs> and a clock bundled for? 105 bucks. 110. 105. No, 107. no. 107. 107. 107. 107. 107. 107. Done. Done. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've exhausted everything, and then I'm told, oh, there's an upstairs. So I hurtle up these stairs, and, oh, I'm in bottle land. General Ray, one thing I've noticed about Australia, you are the bottle capital of the world. <laughs> I have never seen as many <laughs> bottles. Occasionally, you get stoneware bottles. Um, so I'm interested in brown glazed stoneware. I see two cylindrical bottles. Vintage tobacco jars were popular collectibles, but prices have recently dropped. Eric may be taking a risk here. I don't know whether just to go for the one or whether I should go for the two. They've been together for 100 years. Have they? How could you split them? Well, that was a, that's obviously a marriage made in heaven, isn't it? What's your best, Ray? 90? 90. Done deal. Good on you. Eric spent $440 on a few select buys. Alan's guy? eclectic mix of seven lots is... 382.50. Trust me, I, I read all your books. Yeah. Alan, don't do the stare. I've seen you do it to a lot of people. Well, <laughs> the thing is, 50. let me just explain. In the morning, I wait an extra 10 minutes for Alan. Do you know why? He's not doing his hair, sharpening his teeth. <laughs> <laughs> 200. <laughs> all right, done. Thanks, Ray. OK, thank you very much. I can't say it has made a pleasure. <laughs> Nobody else yet. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you were too nice. We've done it, crossed the New South Wales border, and we're definitely in Queensland, the Sunshine State. Well, I've got to say, Alan, uh, as much as I love Blackpool, as much as I love Bournemouth, uh, this beach is going to take some, uh, some beating. So where have you brought me today, Alan? This is the Gold Coast, and behind us is Surfers Paradise, all those big buildings up there. Good grief. This is the, uh, basically, it would be the holiday capital of Australia. This is where everybody wants to come and relax because the beaches go on forever and they're absolutely golden. Just like the Antique Centre I'm going to take you into at the moment, which is called the Gold Coast Antique Centre. I love haggling. Haggling is in my nature. I have a Greek-Russian background. Haggling is what I grew up with and if there's no haggling, there's no business. But it's got to be in my favour and I've got to make a profit. Nico's Centre is a treasure trove of Hollywood memorabilia, thanks to the nearby Gold Coast movie studios. What we've got here, uh, we've got Predator and uh, the Werewolf, which are quite fantastic. They're very, very soft latex and they're really, really lifelike. I can imagine on a dark night they'd be really scary. We're looking at about $1,500 for either one of those, yeah. And movie studios mean movie stars. We've had some really top-end customers here. We had Johnny Depp and... Uh, and his wife came in here. They spent about a couple of hours in here just looking at different antiques and it was interesting to know what he was interested in. 
Um, he loves typewriters, loves um, old weapons like knives and daggers. Um, his ex-wife Amber Heard loves photo albums, especially Victorian photo albums with the photos. They haggled, which is great, and uh, Amber Heard bought some fabulous stuff and so did Johnny. Final stop, round six, and our dynamic dealers have about $900 combined to spend. What sort of money is on that? $225. No, no. And I'm looking at the ticket. You see the ticket there? Yeah, I can see the that ticket. It's a very old ticket. If the ticket's a bit faded and a bit dirty, and if the item's been there quite a long while, then quite often it's possible to do a deal. My next price will be my last. It's Wait, no, 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 it's never the last. It is. <laughs> promise you. We've done business before, you know that. It's we have. 120. Um, I know it's hurting, but that's it, the market. It hurts. It isn't the market, it hurts. But that's the market. But you're here, I thought you were a nice fella. Well, yeah, it was before. It was before the market changed. OK. When you could just spend money and not worry about too much, you are going to sell everything. Yeah. You knew you were going to sell I just, everything. I just want to make sure that that wasn't your last offer. At 125, we have a deal. Oh, I've got to let you win. <laughs> <laughs> deal. <laughs> Love those, love. Splashing $80, Alan adds to his record collection and buys a retro juicer. I, again, spend an inordinate amount of time looking for, for objects. I arrive at this particular cabinet and I spot something on the bottom shelf in a far corner. And the glaze and everything told me right away, I'm looking at somebody that was made in my own county of Lancashire. And that somebody was a Pilkington Royal Lancaster vase. I'm here to sell. Would you go to 300? I go to 280. I am sticking my neck out there. You might be, because in Australia, not, not a lot of people know lapisware. Exactly. I don't think you're your chance is that big, really. Okay. It's a fabulous piece. But okay. if you want to pay 280, I'll accept that. Would you? Yep. Done. So I buy it. It's a great thing. So great, I don't want to sell it. Oh, I do like that. I've only got $168. He's got $295 on that. That's a bit of an ask, can you really? Hello. Can you give me a CPA? What I'm going to do, I'm going to find another piece and put another piece in with it. And then I'm going to offer him $168 for both pieces. He's going to tell me I'm complete and utter idiot. And then we're going to take the other piece out and say, what can you do that? Can you do that for $168? And uh, with a little bit of luck, he might have pity on me and sell it to me. We'll wait and see. Eric spots a 19th century Chinese figurine for $55. Um, quite nice, Ming style. And now he wants the best price. OK, um, if I can um, have a, a meeting of, of the ways, and then we'll see if we do a little deal on that. Alan's trying to put one over on Nico with a baffling bundle buy, but he needs another item. So we've got a little collection there and see if I can confuse him, which I have never done in 30 years. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Will Alan's sting come off? And where on earth is Eric's Chinese statue? So I asked the lady, could you find out what the best price would be on this? You know, you've got to do it. Um, and I'm waiting, waiting for her to come back. And I'm waiting. It's a disaster for Eric. Nico has mixed up his dealers. Nice choice, Alan. It is a nice choice, but it's not just that. I'm looking at these two as well. And I've got $168. 168 For the three. Alan, I, I love haggling, but and I like you, but I don't know if I like you that much. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's all I've got, I, I will do you a favour and I'll do the two pieces for 168 And uh, I'm waiting. And um, so I thought I'll, I'll go down there and G it up a little bit. So I go down there and I meet Nico, you know, the friend of Alan. I said, I'm just looking for that... Um, that, that, that figure, that Chinese cardboard figure that, that your colleagues just brought down, you know, to get an estimate on. Give me a, give me a price. Oh, really? I, oh, well, Alan's bought it. And, <laughs> and I saw it in the cabinet and I asked for a price on it. And did you shake hands on it? Um, we haven't even been given the price yet. Well, Alan. I was given the price 
and I bought it. Well, you could. It was, well, it was, a, sure it that... was, it was a, a mistaken okay. identity. I thought that it was he Alan that was asking the price. I sort of have a, a little confrontation uh, with Alan, and he, he's plain ignorant. I don't know anything about it. Oh, you can sleep at night. I will never know. No, he's a charlatan. OK. I'll go with that. But not when somebody's having a smile and a bit of a jig. Let's have a game of Spot the Plonker. <laughs> the one who didn't buy the figure when it was available. Eric soon spots a silver lining. In the shape of another Lalique perfume bottle he gets for $220. And do you know something? Believe it or not, Alan Carter, by snatching that um, Chinese wooden figure, he's done me a favour, because had he not done that, I would not have had the funds to purchase this little treasure of a perfume bottle by the greatest perfume bottle designer ever. That man, René Jules Lalique. Well, I've heard it said that revenge is a dish that's best served cold. So on that note, I think Alan better watch out when it comes to the auction. They're $1,300 spent. It's auction round six at Lawson's Auctioneers. It's a 10-round series. Eric leads by three to two. First lot of the day, folks, is the large rectangular red glass foiled back pitcher of a matador and a bull circa 1960. Uh, things get off to a good start for Alan because he, he buys this matador and bull pitcher. Alan picked this up for $60 at Ludo's. And he made himself a tidy profit. All silent at 150. Ooh. That was a good start, Alan, wasn't yeah, it? Good start. Eric kicks off with his $35 Art Deco vase. Penny advance on 45, 45. the jets are back. We're all done. Ooh. All silent at 45. Oh, bargain, innit? Yeah, but still a profit. Oh, uh, yeah. Nudge. A nudge. A nudge, yeah. Oh, right, the, oh, the, uh, the ironing board, the ironing board. A great ironing board, that, eh? As the ironing boards go, that is the prince of all It's really your style, It was Eric's first ironing board buy. It could be his last. Come on, come on. 15, all oh, right. Oh, uh, I thought I was going to take you on with that one, Alan. $50 straight in, the bid is here at 50. Alan and Eric's lots are treading water. Eight double nine, sir. Very well bought. Eighty dollars gives me a massive profit of five dollars. Or worse, going backwards. Thirty dollars, ma'am. Nine seven five one. Thank you. Your vehicle doesn't look the same without that strap to the top. Finally, Alan gets a break with a sixty dollar profit on his oil painting. All done and silent at one fifty. There it goes. One hundred fifty dollars goes to the absentee bidder. Next lot is six oh four. Is the nineteen sixties at Silver Cross Pram. A beautiful big pram. Now, this was a bold buy, a bold oh, buy. It's a fantastic thing, isn't it? Yeah. I did think him very, very brave to buy that uh, Silver Cross uh, pram for the money he did. He paid $180. What about $50? Oh, no. Oh, no. Thank 50. you, sir, at 50 At 50 He's in front at 50 Right, 50 You're planning on having on. another child, sir, at 50 uh, uh, <laughs> Any uh, on 50 right. He's in front at 50 I will 60 now, 60 now. 70 at 70, gent front young Ooh. man in front at 70 dollars. I'm selling all done. Oh, oh. $70 to 903. Ouch. Congratulations. That was, that was well, a big hit. Sadly, he came a cropper. Um, now, you know, I don't want to dwell on my competition's misfortunes because, you know, if you do that, karma has a way of coming back and biting you, and it did. That takes us to lot number 619 is the Lalique clear and frosted footed vase featuring band of sparrows. So my Lalique vase comes up. I've got high expectations. I mean, I paid what I thought was a fair price, 350 I still thought there was a profit in it. At 180 where are your buyers? There are no buyers. Where are the at buyers? $180 now. But Any the lovely Lalique is struggling. At Go on, I'll go 240 Go on, go on, 240 Thank you. At 240 At $240, he's up back. We're finished. At What's your number today? So I was a minus 110. Oh, if you want to buy that, zero. four times that amount up there. Not just saying it. No. Anyway. Next up, Alan's bundle from Chindera Bay. 
He paid $225 for the lot. At 110. At 110. At $110. Oh, this is another world. They all sell well for a combined profit of $165. Oh. You're printing money here, Alan. You're printing money. We've only just started, It's a long day, yeah. Fancy Dalton Lambert tobacco jar. Oh, yes, 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 yes. There we go. Oh, I paid jars. 90 for the Can jar. Eric claw back with his tobacco jars? Oh, Where's the bidding? 60. Well, that's minus 30 for me, Alan. Alan strikes again with his American clock. Such a good clock. And his carved ebony bust. Okay, they're so underrated, those busts. Next lot, there it is, 6.21 on the Dolls yeah. Baby or Dog Pram. Where do we go, boys? Dog. <laughs> 100 to go. Put out dog. $50 the pram, boys. Quick, quick. Alan's $50. run hits a pothole with another pram he paid $125 for at Nico's. That's a death. Well, Kiss of death. Sorry, I knew that when I bought it. Alan had the two prams in today. I think Alan got a bit um, teary-eyed when he saw one of them and paid a little bit too much. Up next is my Cactus Lalique bottle. Is this going to be a winner? Having paid two twenty for it, I could see this doing three twenty, four twenty. Okay, here we go, Lalique. Oh my God! I'm going to start the bidding away here with me at one hundred eighty, one ninety, two hundred. 220 starts it away here with me. At 220. 220. At 220. Want to pay genuinely for it. glassware. At 220. At $220 now. 220. Any advance at 220. Absentee takes Come it home on. at 220. You're done. 220. All out. 240. Exhaust my bid. All said, all done. 240. That's a bit of a punt for $20 profit. I know, it is a bit of a punt. Eric had two pieces of the leak glassware in today. I really feel for him because both didn't fire. Um, it's one of those things, maybe the league buyers just weren't here. Uh, but whoever got those pieces, high-end glassware, one of the world's most famous brands, it's a very good buy and a very good investment. At least I made a profit. Uh, but all in all, um, this particular auction was not, without question, <laughs> my finest moment. Oh, the sled, yeah, there. The snow sled buy was a huge gamble. That'd be useful in Sydney, isn't it, eh? What? It seems cheap at 100. I should be buying it myself. 110, 120, 130, 140. 140, there it goes. That was my top, 80. sir. All right. Who would have thought we could get that sort of money in the middle of a Sydney summer? But, hey, that's what we do. There we go. Again, classic Art Deco uh, form. Uh, Alan's Art Deco guys. lady keeps the money rolling in. 260, man. A little Perhaps angel from somewhere there for you, Alan. Nice Thank little piece. Yeah. That is a really good piece. But what do you that pay for it? What do I pay for it? $11. You paid $11 for that? Cactus. No, I'm lying. Oh. It has the stencil mark, very important. Alan's juice of fizzes dropping $20, but the classic records double their money. Eric needs a big hit, and fast. My big chance in this lot was a piece, I think, that I did buy with my heart, and that was the Pilkington Pottery. Beautiful little piece, buyers. I'm going to start here with an absentee of exactly $300 and $325. The bid is here. I paid $280 for that, and I wasn't sure whether Australia would be interested. At $425, no further. At $450, you're back in. At $450, $450 selling now. $450 up back. Congratulations, 450. Seven, thank you. <laughs> It'll be nice when I get back to tell the members of the Pilkington Pottery Tile Society that lapisware is respected um, in uh, in Australia. Could Eric's luck finally be turning? Just two lots to go. Alan's $55 Chinese carving that caused a furor. But how you can sleep at night, I will never know. No, he's a charlatan. OK. Versus Eric's hero piece. Eric bought a fantastic dinner service. I sold a similar dinner service, and I got $4,000 for that dinner service. Tension fills the room as Eric and Alan's last two lots come up for sale. I was paying particular attention to lot 624, um, a Chinese carved wood figure. Next lot we move on to, ladies and gents, is 624's late 19th century finely carved wood and polychrome Chinese figure of a fine lady. There she is. Uh, you will remember that it was the subject of an altercation between myself and my opposition. 
I remember it, Alan. Uh, the auction here, I think, starts at about 50, goes to 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110 in quick time. 80, 190, I must go 200, my buyer, at 200. It staggers its way up to $220. 220 shorter, thank you. 220. 540. 546. No comment. It sold for $220, and he was even more upset about that. <laughs> he's, even he's, lost, he's lost 170 bucks. <laughs> it, it's opening up an old wound, I have to admit. I thought it had healed, but it hadn't. I was not very happy about that situation. However, life is too short and we must move on. But Eric is confident his final lot of the day is going to be a game changer. My big buy came up. My extensive porcelain dinner service, coffee service, tea service, all in one. I sold a similar dinner service, and I got $4,000 for that dinner service. And I'm thinking, thank you. I've just been given, you know, the killer blow. Uh, where do we start it away by? Something that size, I'd like to see $100, and that's cheap. 100 anywhere. 100 to go, half it to 50 buyers. Who's in? Quick, quick. The whole service, $50. No interest. No. Bid. Hey. 60, 60, it was 50 used, 60 here, 70 there. Uh, in the UK, something like that would weigh in at, in at least, at least, you know, $1,500. Very cheap buying at $70. No. I will sell it out at $70. No, Seems a crime, 70, 80 now. At 80 now, 90 is better. At 90, oh, at 90 bid now. Any I'm advance on $90 all done. But I'm not up in the UK. I'm down under. Any advance at $150, shakes head, serves call at $150, all done. Oh. Eight, nine, five, one, five, oh, very wow. Eight, what an opportunity nine, missed. I just got my money back. I didn't make a single, single dollar on that lot. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm seeking guidance from, from an analyst to how to deal with that situation because, quite frankly, I just couldn't believe it. OK, that concludes today's auction, ladies and gentlemen. I've now been handed the results, and they go as follows. Today, Eric has hammered $1,320. Alan has hammered $1,825, which means Alan wins by exactly $505. Congratulations, Alan. And Alan. Thank you. Thank you. My turn at last. <laughs> <laughs> nice one, Alan. <laughs> This also means after round number six, ladies and gents, we are level pegging. We're at three legs apiece. So, at the end of that auction, uh, how am I feeling? I'm feeling deflated, because my big lot, you know, let me down big time. And sometimes I win those, those little bouts, and sometimes he wins those little bouts. And if you, if you get a knock on the chin, you've got to accept it, and he does the same thing. But, you know, hey ho, go with the flow and on to the next one. And next time, the battle gets personal. Here we go. The only thing we can't get in is your case. <laughs> Don't buy that. I'm not sure I'm talking to you, Alan. Some okay. extraordinary buys lead to an amazing auction. I was told she was wearing a vest. <laughs> That's next on Clash of the Collectibles.